there go the twins, geezers would say, when we walked down the frog and toad in our Saville row, whistle and flute, tailored to flatter our through penny bits, which were big, like our East End hearts. No one could tell us apart, except when one twin wore glasses or shades over two of our four mince pies. Oh, London, London, London town, made for a girl and her double to swagger around, or be driven at speed in the back of an Austin princess, black, up west to a club, to order a bubbly, the best, in a bucket of ice, garland singing that night, nice. Childhood, when we were God forbids, we lived with our grandmother, God rest her soul, a tough suffragette who knocked out a grand national horse, name of Bolletown Boy, with one punch in front of the king, for the cause. She was known round our manor thereafter as Cam Borvai. By the time we were six, we were sat at her skirts, inhaling the juniper perfumes of her Vera Lynn, hearing the stories of Emmeline's army before and after the Fourteen War. Diamond ladies they were, those birds who fought for the vote, salt of the earth, and maybe this marked us forever because of the loss of our mother who died giving birth to the pair of unusual us. Straight up, we knew, even then, what we wanted to be, had, you could say, a vocation. We wanted respect for the way we entered a bar, or handled a car, or shriveled a hard-on with simply a menacing look, a threatening word in a hairy ear, a knee in the orchestra stalls, bells of the balls, queens of the smoke. We dreamed it all, trudging for miles, holding the hand of the past, learning the map of the city under our feet, clocking the boozers, back alleys, mews, the churches and bridges, the parks, the underground stations, the grand hotels where Vita and Violet, pinups of ours, had given it well up. We stared from Hungerford Bridge as the lights of London tarted up the old Thames. All right, we made our mistakes in those early years. We were soft when we should have been hard, and rolled a few girls in the firm who were well out of order, two of them getting engaged, a third sneaking back up the Myland Road every night to be some plonker's wife. Rule number one, a boyfriend's for Christmas, not just for life. But we learned, and our 21st birthday saw us installed in the first of our clubs, ball breakers, just off Evering Road. The word got around and about that any woman in trouble could come to the craze, no questions asked for protection. We'd soon earned the clout and the dosh and the respect for a move, Piccadilly way, to a classier gaff, to the club at the heart of our legend, prick teasers. We admit, bang to rights, that the fruits of feminism, fact, made us rich, feared, famous, friends of the stars, have a good butchers at these. There we forever are, in glamorous black and white, assertively staring out next to Germain, Bardot, Twiggy and Lulu, Dusty and Yoko, Bassie, Babs, Sandy, Diana Dors. And London was safer then on account of us. Look at the letters we get. Dear twins, them were the good old days when you ruled the streets. There was none of this mugging of ladies or touching young girls. We hear what's being said. Remember us at our peak, in our prime, dressed to kill, and swaggering into our club, stroke of twelve, the evening we'd leaned on Sinatra to sing for free. There was always a bit of a buzz when we entered, stopping at favoured tables, giving a nod or a wink, buying someone a drink, lighting a fag, lending an ear. That particular night something electric, trembling, blue, crackled the air. Leave us both there, spotlit, strong, at the top of our world, with Sinatra drawling, and hears a song for the twins, then opening her beautiful throat to take it away. These boots are made for walking, and that's just what'll do. 
one of these days these boots are gonna walk all over you. Are you ready boots? Start walking.